Let's go ahead and get to yes. Trevor Noah. So Trevor Noah, I think, took over uh, for Jon Stewart at The Daily Show seven years ago. The show has never been the same since. Yeah. It's been basically culturally irrelevant. It has not been funny. Um, you know, he just, like, the thing that made Stewart so great is that, yeah, obviously, he's, like, on the left and more or less a progressive, but he would have biting criticism of the hypocrisy of Democrats, Never. the media across the board. I mean, he loved to rake CNN across the coals, and that's what made the show funny, subversive, interesting, relevant, et cetera. Trevor Noah just didn't really bring any of that to the table. And now, after uh, hosting the show for seven years, he has just announced that he is moving on. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. And I realized that after the seven years, um, my time is up. I, uh, yeah, but in, 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 the most, in the most beautiful way, honestly. I, I've loved hosting this show. It's been one of my greatest challenges. It's been one of my greatest joys. I, I, I've loved trying to figure out how to make people laugh, even when the stories are particularly shitty on the worst days. You know, we've, we've laughed together, we've cried together. Um, but after seven years, I, I feel like it's 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 time. Yeah, I mean, Comedy Central I, I says agree it's time. We, it's long past time. <laughs> yeah. Says we are grateful to Trevor for our amazing partnership over the past seven years. With no time timetable for his departure, we're working together on next steps. As we look ahead, we're excited for the next chapter in the twenty five plus year history of the Daily Show as it continues to redefine culture through sharp and hilarious social commentary, helping audiences make sense of the world around them. It seems like they were a little bit surprised. Like it doesn't seem like he was forced out. Mm -hmm. It seems like this was his affirmative decision to move on and do something else. So, no, nobody yeah. knows. I mean, I think we should just take it in the context of late night TV just doesn't matter anymore. I mean, who is actually watching? First of all, I'm, I'm asleep for hours by 11 p.m. But like how many people are sitting at their television who are like, I got to tune in to watch Trevor Noah's take. I mean, I don't even know when it airs. How many people didn't have cable? I mean, we've seen a 10% reduction over just the last yeah. year. This is the same case for <laughs> Seth Meyers, for uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Um, and who's that other guy who's leaving? The fat one? Court, I forget Corden, it, James, James Corden. Corden. Yeah, that guy. But you know, even him, let's take him. Was yeah. his show popular or were his clips on YouTube popular? Mm -hmm. What made him famous in America? I would say, I think that his He's like, the one singing that did the bits. Car he does those, yeah, car the car karaoke, karaoke or whatever. Um, that's, uh, to me, the reason he's famous is not because of a show, it's because he has a show which happens to get posted on YouTube. So what's the point? I mean, even Noah, Saturday Night Live is another good one. How many people are tuning into Saturday Night Live and then watching whichever sketches that they happen to put out on YouTube, on Twitter, on Instagram, uh, or elsewhere? So the issue is, is that you can't monetize the part where you actually get famous nearly at the same rate that you can monetize like ads directly on the platform yeah. that you own. And you and I do this show, we have a decent amount of people who work on it, like 10 total, right? They have like 30 people who are working on this one thing and they do less content than you and I do. They do one show a day and they have like 30, 30 something people and then less people watch it. It's like, this is craziness. Like, well, something has to give yeah, on the balance sheet. That's all true. Right? Yeah, the business model has changed right. so it no longer makes as much sense. Right. Um, and then the other piece I think is that like, there was all this speculation at the beginning of the Trump era that this would be great for comedians because right. it's so uh, absurd uh, it's and awful. such a buffoon and right. all that stuff. And it was totally the opposite. Like, all these people who are more, like, liberal on the liberal side, mm -hmm. which is, you know, all of these late-night yeah. hosts. And basically. they all became the same. They, yeah. th there was such, like, moral sanctimony mm -hmm. that creeped into the comedy that it just wasn't funny. I mean, the perfect example of this is like on SNL, them singing hallelujah when Trump oh, wins, yeah. right? I mean, this is, and so it became, first of all, reality became so absurd that they struggled to like, you know, be even more absurd with their comedy. And then there was this total unwillingness to poke fun at, you know, not the Republicans. Mm -hmm. And it just made it really predictable and felt like moral preening and felt kind of cringe. And Samantha B, you know, she just, her show just ended as well. Like it all just, it didn't, it didn't make comedy good. It sort of broke liberal comedy in particular. The genius of Stewart was that in the media environment of 06, whenever it was not only encouraged, but good, as Keith Olbermann showed us, to eviscerate the Bush administration, yeah. is he had to also take, go after the opponents of Bush, the mainstream media, and more. And by keeping that in the Obama administration, going after the Obama administration, and always having like dual victims, he made it known that he was at least, beyond his personal politics, like would always make fun 
fun of absurdity wherever it fell. Comedy is funny when it says the things you're like that you're not supposed mm-hmm. to say. It's got to be a little rebellious. Yes. And during the Bush era, like it's easy to forget the like society and all of mainstream media, like they were all pushing for this war. They were all backing up Bush. And so when you had these few voices that were willing to point out the absurdity of it, whether it was a Keith Olbermann with like the screeds mm-hmm. he would do, or whether it was a John Stewart where he would lampoon them. Colbert. It, Colbert, I mean, oh, oh phenomenal in that yeah. era, phenomenal. And so it was funny because it was rebellious, because it was saying something that was edgy and that you weren't really supposed to say. And so when they went in like this, you know, hard like resistance liberal direction, well, that was that wasn't rebellious. That was like the general consensus right. of the mainstream media. I'm not even saying like, you know, that all of it was like incorrect or anything, but it just wasn't edgy. It didn't con- it didn't have that sort of subversive edgy element that makes comedy funny and interesting at its best. I agree. But, you know, the good news is, is that comedy is blowing up. You know, comedy, I pay attention to because I think it's like a leading indicator of where all of entertainment is going. So Mm -hmm. outside of Rogan, I mean, we're seeing like a comedy renaissance. You you could spend your whole day listening to hilarious comedians. Like you've, I mean, I could could name too many, just people I'm familiar with who aren't, don't exist at the quote unquote mainstream level, but which are doing incredibly well. Like people who've built whole studios, guys like Tom Segura and Burt Kreischer. I mean, these guys are crushing, killing it at a level, like in a way, you know, the inspiration for breaking points and the audience that we speak to and more all comes from the guys like Tim Dillon and Shane Gillis and Andrew Schultz and Bobby Lee and like Santino and Rogan and the, the whole sphere that he created on YouTube like made it possible to that we could know like the concept is proven that we can like move into it. So anyway, I, I pay very close attention I think to that because I think the death of late night is the precursor to the eventual death of news, or at least I very, very much hope so. So I'm glad we got in on the ground floor, Crystal, Yes, uh, of that revolution. Indeed. Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.